Um, I'd like to introduce now our next presenter this morning, Adam Miller. He's representing Yayasan Planet Indonesia, and the project name is Integrating Economic Empowerment into Cultural Preservation. The project location is in Indonesia, and the theme for his presentation is around design. The project aim is to preserve the rich material, culture, handicrafts, and artwork of the indigenous women of West Borneo. So please join me in welcoming Adam. All right. Well, thank you. So my name is Adam Miller, and I am a co-founder of Planet Indonesia. And three years ago, I fell in love with an idea, an idea that economic development could exist in tandem with cultural preservation. And through that, we could reach results of unfathomable size. So when you look at these textiles, I want to ask you, what do you guys see? Colors, threads, motifs, designs. When the indigenous people of Borneo, Indonesia, look at these textiles, they see deities, nature, God, the living, and dead. When the indigenous people of Borneo look at these textiles, they see direct representations of their past, present, and future. So now, I want you guys to imagine you're a 12-year-old girl living in Borneo, living in poverty, wanting to learn about your ancestors, wanting to learn about your culture, but living in a country where the very national government has made it illegal for you to practice your traditional religion. There is no argument in the world today that indigenous communities are some of the most marginalized groups on the planet. And this problem is only worse for indigenous women. At Planet Indonesia, we believe empowering women must go beyond solely economic development. We believe that we must integrate economics into cultural preservation in order to elevate local rights, traditions, and values. So our goal was simple. Revitalize traditional textiles as a form of economic empowerment and do it by creating sustainable business. What started with just 25 women has grown to over 1,500 producers throughout 44 different villages. With sales made from their profits, we have um, created savings and loans programs. Women can take out loans not only to further develop their business, to pay for their daughter's education bills, or even pay for their husband's health care bills. Although the direct impact of our program is at 1,500 individuals, through the financial services provided, we estimate that we have nearly over 8,000 beneficiaries. However, currently, poverty levels are spiking again. Because of environmental loss and deforestation, women no longer have access to the natural dyes they need to use in their products. When a woman uses a natural dye in her product, she increases the price by five times. That's not just an income level that's five times the size. That's a savings and loans program that is five times larger. And that means that for 8,000 beneficiaries, that's an impact level that has five times the potential. So, with the $25,000 from Project Inspire, we will impact three major sectors, people, profit, and planet. First, with land that has been donated to our organization, we will create natural dye gardens to improve raw good access, increasing the income and financial services provided for 8,000 beneficiaries. Second, we are creating natural dye manuals and guidebooks to distribute across the island to reach an additional 2,000 women to help them increase the quality and price of their product. Finally, we are launching a marketing program to help these women make an international website to begin selling their products on a global scale. The $25,000 from Project Inspire will act as an economic injection into this program, reversing the negative cycle of spiking poverty levels and cultural loss through the simple application of natural dyes and technology. At Planet Indonesia, there is something that we value above all else, and that is the weavers. Other organizations force weavers to to create products of particular sizes, dimensions, and colors. We believe this turns artisans into factory workers and turns material culture into nothing more than cash transactions. At Planet Indonesia, we use economic development as a mechanism and tool to preserve local culture. Currently, we believe that this is the ultimate, the ultimate result of our program. <clears throat> Sorry. To us, this is of higher value than pure economic development. The women we are reaching are weaving the stories of their past, of their present, of their future into textiles, and they are preserving their culture for future generations. This is what we aspire to achieve, and this is what we aspire to promote. A world that does not eradicate the rights and cultures of indigenous people, but a world that inspires us to not only move forward for a better future, but to preserve a vibrant and brilliant past. 
So do you remember that 12-year-old girl? Well, now she's an old woman. She is on a pathway out of poverty. She is weaving her stories into her cloth. She is teaching her children about her culture. And she is teaching the next generation about not how only to engage in sustainable business, but about the very essence of what it means to be an indigenous woman in a modern world. Thank you for your time. Thank <laughs> you.